Welcome to this overview of PXF Deep Fade. So here I have a scene, I have a bunch of cards with some texture on them, uh, basically noise to create smoke or clouds or something similar. I'm using PXF Smoke Box to create the cards, but that is not really uh, important. It could be any type of uh, geometry with any type of texture on it. So if I look at my render here, the camera is animated. So if I play it back, we can see a problem. I see the textures are popping off. So as the camera is moving forward, you can see textures disappearing in one frame, essentially creating a popping effect. If we look at it from the top view, it will become obvious what's the problem. As the camera moves, it sees the card in front of it and the card becomes closer and closer and closer and closer and eventually the camera moves beyond the card, the card be goes behind the camera and disappears. So that's a problem. We want the texture to gracefully fade out instead of pop out. That's where PXF Deep Fade comes in. So I'll go into Pixel Fudger menu and get a Deep Fade and connect it to my scene here. So the way to read the interface here to make sense of it is to imagine that there is a camera on the left hand side pointing towards the right and the values here are units in front of the camera and the red line represents opacity. So stuff that's really close to camera from zero units right in front of camera to 10 units in front of camera will be completely invisible. The opacity is all the way down at zero. Everything from 10 units in front of camera all the way up to 20 units will gradually fade in. So stuff that is between 10 and 20 will have its opacity ramp up as it's going closer to 20. And then from 20 to 30, no change in opacity. So the samples stay as they were. And then from 30 to 40, the opacity goes down again. And then from 40 to infinity, uh, the opacity is all the way down to zero. And those samples will be invisible. So this is how you would read the interface in PXF Deep Fade. So that makes sense. But to enter our values here, we need to know how far or close stuff is in front of our camera. Uh, an easy way to do that would be to use a deep sample. So let's get a deep sample node connected to our deep render, put our viewer on it double click on it and now we have the position jack here in the overlay and if I move my position jack I get a reading and I can see if I go to my first frame where we see most of the smoke you can see that the stuff really close to camera is at three units approximately and stuff that is far away is at 72 units so to make a uh, numbers that are easy to understand. Let's just say that our scene goes from zero from the camera all the way to about 75 or 80. Let's call it 80. So we need to take that into account when we're going to adjust our deep fade. So let's uh, set up our deep fade. We can zoom on the curve here to see a little bit more with the plus and minus on the right side. And these are the default values. So uh, I don't want to kill everything from 0 to 10. I, I want to keep uh, more stuff than that. So I'm going to move that back till 5 units. So everything from 0 to 5 will be gone. Usually this is desirable because stuff that's really, really, really close to camera will end up looking pixelated and not very good anyways. So I want the stuff really close to be invisible. And then from 5 units till, let's say, 15 units will be progressively more and more and more opaque and then from 15 till whatever so my scene ends up at 80 so i'm gonna can put the end at 80 and let's say 60. let's uh, zoom out so everything from 15 to 60 will be full opaque and then from 60 all the way down to 80 will become transparent again and everything uh, after 80 units will be completely invisible. If we don't want to kill the stuff that is very far away, I just need to push these values really far. So I could set it to, let's say 1000. So now I'm going to fade the stuff that's close to camera and everything far away will stay the same. But I actually like the fact that we can 
fade the stuff that's far away because usually in these types of shots the cards tend to stack on top of each other and become really busy and mushy so the stuff that's really far away usually i want to gracefully fade it out so you can think of it like a deep crop but with feathering instead of having hard limits on the deep crop uh, so let's have a look let's see how it it looks like let's compare both uh, versions so i prepared a little con contact sheet here so here on the left side i've got my original render that's just the camera moving through the cards and on the right i've got the same render rendered in deep from scanline render and then uh, through the deep fade converted back to rgba non-deep and then into my little contact sheet here so you can see the difference is pretty massive so on the left that you can see the cards popping off as we move through them and on the right uh, we can see that the cards are gracefully fading out as we move through them so that's the main benefit of deep fade so think of it of like a deep crop but with feathering Another benefit of deep fade is that it removes the samples that are completely transparent, making your deep image lighter, less samples to process. So to see that, I'm going to pinch my deep fade a little bit tighter. So let's bring our limits closer. So let's say 20 to 40. So now I'm really removing the stuff that is uh, far away here. And I'm going to inspect my deep image with a deep two points. I'm gonna connect it to my deep fade and to the camera. And if I look at it, if I don't have the deep fade, these are all the samples in front of my camera. If I look at it from the first frame, it's easier to see. So here I have all these points in my uh, deep two points. So essentially all these deep samples. If I enable deep fade, you can see that the stuff far away is gone. So these are all millions of samples I don't have to process anymore because they are gone. If you don't want to kill them, you can of course uncheck delete zero opacity and then the samples are still there, but the opacity is zero, of course. The last knob here is the mix knob. As expected, it behaves like a regular mix knob. So if you lower the mix, you get uh, back the original image. So if the mix is all the way down to zero, you get your original render, and then you have a half mix between the two until you get the full result of deep fade. So if you just need deep fade for a moment, you can animate the mix to have deep fade appear for a certain moment and then disappear after. So there you go, very simple node. I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, this concludes our little overview of PXF DeepFade. Hopefully it's useful for you and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.